This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. You join me with something very near and dear to my heart, a mini. Uh, no secret, I'm a mini enthusiast. My first car was a mini and I've owned many of them over the last few years. Well, Mini is getting an entirely new product lineup, an entirely new uh, design and look to everything. This is the new Mini Countryman, and it is fully electric, this particular one. I'm going to take you on a full tour, front to back, tell you everything we know about this car. And I think you guys will find it really interesting because there's some decisions here that I think are truly fantastic and set this vehicle apart from anything else that's fully electric. And then there are some decisions where I'm like, why the heck would they do this? So a little bit of a mixed bag here with the new Mini Countryman, but we're gonna go into it a full tour here surrounding the IAA in Munich, another new car launch to share with you. There's so much to get into with the new Mini Countryman and I guess, well, maybe I should tell you my first car was a Mini Countryman, the first car that I really uh, ordered from the factory, was able to spec it to what I want, and I ended up driving that well over 100,000 miles, modifying it, joining on a whole bunch of mini events, getting to know the enthusiasts, uh, taking part in this car. So, you know, seeing a new generation mini countryman is really great. Um, the original countryman was codenamed, we'll get nerdy for a bit, because again, I love this stuff, was codenamed the R60, and it was actually built by Magna in Graz, and now Magna is a sponsor of Out of Spec, so this is crazy full circle for me. And then they went to the F60 model, which is the current generation countryman, if you will. This is really a BMW chassis underneath, very similar to the X1. And now we have the U25. <laughs> it seems weird calling a Mini with a U in the front of it. I don't know why, but it is pretty interesting. And this car is coming to America, which is really great. So we'll be able to go through all of the specs. This car, just so you know up front, is built on the FAAR, the FAR platform. It's an internal BMW platform that um, underpins the iX1 as well here. There will also be combustion versions of the Countryman, gas and diesel and battery electric. This uh, platform supports all of the above. Unsure if there will be a plug-in hybrid or not, but at least on this channel, and really for me, all I care about is the full battery electric one because this is the future. It's now, I keep saying electric cars are you know, not really the future anymore, they're today. So here's the car, fully electric, mini countryman. Um, come join me around the back because I haven't shown it to you yet. We'll give you a sneak preview on the inside because I think one of the coolest things about the mini is the high quality nature of it. Truly, finally, they have an interior fitting with massaging seats, unbelievably cool materials, completely animal free. And just look at these little details, like especially here on this door, this fabric material that is so high quality. It's so cool. It's so exciting. And I think BMW owns Mini, of course. I think they've always been able to do some fun things with Mini but all of the design details, the touch points has gotten more effort than any Mini before, I would say. Um, let me see if I can lock the car and then unlock it for you. I just wanna show you the light signature on startup here in the back, cause it's pretty cool. They have these LED taillights. Look at these things moving around, sliding everywhere. Pretty funny to say the least. And um, the turn signal bit lights up here in the center. Perhaps I can show you some of these things later on, um, but there you go. This is the Mini Countryman and just initial first glance looks great. So should we get into the specs a little bit and um, sort of the initial expectation on pricing? Well, first of all, the battery pack capacity, this is where I think they may have messed up a little bit too small. It's a 64 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. Some outlets, like when I read the, I've made some notes because we've been filming so many cars, but some outlets are claiming 64 kilowatt hour usable. In the press release, it says 66.45 kilowatt hours. I don't know if that's gross. If so, that would be a really tiny buffer, but it should match the same battery pack that's in the iX1. Uh, in terms of recharging this battery pack, let me show you back here, at least for the European market, you have the awesome, and I'm sure this will come to the US, the awesome BMW flaps. This is one of the best things BMW do. 
which is you have these that cover the charge port, and then you can open both by pulling this one or open the top one by pulling this one, and they've just done an incredible job with the charge ports. But what's important is 22 kilowatt AC charging. I'm unsure at the time of this recording if this is an option or standard, but at least the car will support 22 kilowatt charging. I expect it to have 48 amp onboard charger for the US market, similar to i4 and i7. Um, and then the DC charging performance, again, a bit of a bummer. So the AC charging performance for city use is great. 22 kilowatts, there's posts all over Munich, it makes so much sense only 135 kilowatt peak DC fast charging rate. And the thing is, it's not like I think we can justify this by saying the car is going to be really cheap. Minis, especially recent minis, have been expensive, almost too expensive to justify the cost, if you will. I mean, on paper, these cars have never been the best value. They've never been the most fuel efficient, the, the longest range, the best, the fastest cars, but they've always been an emotional purchase. They've always been really fun and great to drive. They've struck, you know, had this balance of being enjoyable. I think this charging performance and the range that's predicted here, which WLTP, um, there's two versions, I'll walk you through them at least, but there's uh, about 200 and 87 miles WLTP and 269 miles WLTP for the US version. The all wheel drive will be 269. We are only getting the all wheel drive and I'll walk you through those in a second, but I just have to complain for a second. Uh, this is not enough range for our market. I'm not a range guy. Range is not the problem. And if you're going to come out with a car with little range, which is great, I think we shouldn't be carrying around all these battery packs, these giant batteries that we aren't using. It needs to at least recharge very quickly and 135 kilowatts just just is like okay. I mean, when ID4 launched in 2021, was it? It had 135 kilowatt charging and we thought, okay, this is like minimum acceptance. This car is now launching many years later, three, four years after that car. ID4 is now doing close to 200 kilowatt charging. We've seen 195 and here's a car that no doubt is gonna be more expensive than the ID4 and it's coming in with less range, smaller battery, slower charging. Ugh, why? Why Mini? The, the, this is a car that is the, this is the first year of production. It needs to be built for the next seven, not the last seven years. So I really think this is quite a disappointment. Uh, even though, you know, the specs that this car has, I was saying were acceptable years ago. Again, this is the first model year of cars to come in the future. Let's hope there's a technical update in their LCI mid-cycle refresh to get you know, 175, 180 kilowatt charging and a great curve. We're unsure of the curve. BMW is actually usually pretty good with the charging curve. So I'm hoping that'll be the case here. But um, yeah, okay. So maybe your road trips take a little bit longer. The 10 to 80% charge time is 29 minutes, which isn't the end of the world. And it does give me an indication that the charging performance might hold it a little bit longer. I haven't gotten into drivetrain specs yet, uh, other than the battery pack, because as far as I can tell, there's just one battery in this car, and it is that 64-ish kilowatt hour usable battery pack. There will also be a front wheel drive version. It's just called the Mini Countryman E. And then there will be a uh, all wheel drive version called the Mini Countryman SE. And the power figures seem pretty good on the SE. So I'm not gonna talk much about the base car because again, we're not getting it in the US. And I think in Europe, it's not gonna be that much less expensive than the SE is my impression. But I just wanna get you these figures so you know them right off the bat. The standard front wheel drive car will be 150 kilowatt power output, 8.6 seconds, zero to 60, 170 kilometer per hour top speed. Okay, I'm not sure if it's a permanent magnet motor uh, or a uh, induction motor. BMW has also been doing these externally excited synchronous motors, which in principle is similar to an induction motor, but it actually has brushes because they excite the rotor on the inside. I know nerd speak. So I'm thinking maybe this has those, but I didn't see a mention of it in the press materials and the guys here weren't sure. So again, very initial take on the countryman at this moment. The rear motor, when you add this with the battery pack, juices the power to 230 kilowatts, which is pretty spicy, well over 300 horsepower, the most powerful Mini ever made, which isn't saying much because they've always needed more power and tunes and stuff to really wake them up. So now we have that 5.6 seconds, zero to 60, very reasonable. I don't think you need much more again, especially in a family city roundabout car. 
and it also leaves room for maybe a JCW electric version in the future if they really want to go crazy. And top speed is increased to 180 kilometers per hour on that particular one. Um, so many options, so many different trims and things. I think, uh, where do I even begin? Maybe I should tell you about the driver assistance system because for the first time in a mini, it will also do lane centering. And that is great news, especially for the long road trips. I imagine a lot of this technology will transfer over to the combustion vehicles as well. You can see there's a camera array up front here in the windshield and then also a radar in the, dash, in the um, uh, bumper right down here. So you have some great sensors on here. It's basically BMW's Active Driving Assistant Pro system, which means it can actually do hands-free eye tracking at low speed up to, I think, 80 kilometers per hour or 60 kilometers per hour. You can go hands-free, sit there like this, as long as your eyes are looking at the road. So same thing we've experienced in three series in the US and things like that. But finally, Mini is getting lane centering. Interestingly, you'll see another video on this channel with the mini hardtop, the brand new electric hardtop that's coming on the market. It's just over there. That car is a brand new platform developed by BMW. No lane centering in that one. These are the decisions I'm not fully understanding what's going on over at BMW Group and prioritizing different things. It's always been a bit of a mystery to me over the years why they decide to do some things and decide not to. I have some critiques on design, by the way. And Alyssa, I really want to get your opinion on design here in this video as well. But this is too flat here. It does not give this car this wide bulldog stance, in my opinion. It kind of comes out and then it's just straight down. I think that's my main issue is the car doesn't look very muscular on the road. It doesn't give me this stability stance. And it really got me thinking when we initially made the video with the Volkswagen GTI electric concept with the guys over there and I was interviewing the head of design for Volkswagen, he was saying low, wide shoulders, make the car low. And I'm like, oh, it gets me thinking. I really love cars that have this sort of wider than they are stance with just a little bit of bulge and the bulge stops here and it doesn't continue out towards the wheel. So, okay, design up front, nailed it. Truly nailed it. I think Mini enthusiasts, they're always gonna complain whenever you change something on a Mini, but I think this looks great. So let me just click uh, unlock here. Let's see if we can see the light up signature. Here we go. Okay, headlights are lighting up. It looks like <laughs> maybe pre-series car. This is an early one. This isn't actually working over here, but everything else is. Does the camera pick that up okay, Alyssa? Great. Uh, the S badge is really the only indication that you've spec'd the all-wheel drive high power output version. This also is the, there's four major trims on the car. And I wrote down which one this is so you guys will know because I know you would ask me. Forgive me for doing this. This is the favored trim. It's sort of the high class luxury trim. It's got massaging seats, optional, really nice interior. There's two sort of lower trims and then there's the JCW sporty trim on top of this. I think when you go to the configurator, which I heard will launch sometime in October, at least for the German market, you'll be able to get all of that information. This will be built, I believe, in Leipzig alongside the BMW X2, which is great. I mean, it's a BMW underneath with a mini badge and mini styling. That's what it comes down to. So the front of it looking very interesting, very cool front camera, 360 degree view as well. Let's see if there's a front trunk. I'm just going to pop the hood, traditional BMW double latch on the hood here. So we can just lift it straight up. Unfortunately, no front trunk in this particular one. One of the downsides of using an existing platform that was built to be combustion and then adapted it for an electric vehicle. What it means for Mini and at least, uh, you know, for BMW as a whole, they can utilize this platform engineering to sell more cars, but it means that the cars that they are selling aren't fully optimized. I say that, but also let's look at the new BMW i7, which is a combustion car and an electric car. And the electric one's awesome. It's so efficient, it has so much range, it drives so well. It's one of the best electric vehicles on the market. So I don't think saying that this supports both gas, diesel, and electric means that it's gonna be a bad electric car. It just means it's not fully optimized from the ground up, but the end user experience based off of the i7, what BMW is also producing, may not be that big of a deal. Let's drop the hood here locked in very nice really good shut lines around the vehicle as well and you can see it's just more of a standard hood no more of this clamshell design that we've seen where the whole 
you know, bonnet lifts up out around the headlights. This is a material called, I believe, vibrant silver. It's almost got a little bit of a gold hue to it. And it's a painted surface. There's no chrome on this vehicle anywhere. It's all environmentally friendly. Chrome is not an environmentally friendly process. And um, yeah, I think we should do a back seat review. What do you think, Alyssa? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we do that, do you want to comment on the exterior styling of the Mini? Um, I mean, I think it looks great. It's a very feminine looking car, I would say. And um, I'm not a fan of this coloring. Uh, but so you don't like the vibrant silver? I, that's not silver. That's gold. I love it. You love it? <laughs> I think it's so good. Well, and I love yeah. all these little details and the mean, all yeah, four the badge. Details are all great, but... And this will change if you get like the JCW version. They're going to change the look on it's all of this. White. White, okay. Well, you can always customize it. Yeah, Minis yeah. are meant to be blank canvases for customization. Noticing a huge physical sunroof up here as well. That's rare to find in electric vehicles. So great to see. Now, I'm not sure how the front seat is set, but again, it's a Mini. Um, so maybe, how about this? Before I give it a back seat review, let me set the front seat to my height because I think that would only be fair to the Mini. So let's come in here, just putting it down. Where would I sit in this car? I would sit, oh, I already have some major issues in here. Okay, I would sit here. And how tall are you? <laughs> I'm six foot one and I weigh a bit too much. <laughs> okay, so livable back seat. There's no sliding available on the bottom portion. There's no rail that they sit on, but I have a little pull tab and I can adjust, I believe in six positions, the backrest to fairly reclined. I actually find it comfortable to be not even that reclined. So that's quite interesting. Uh, but sitting in here, beautiful glass roof. This is really nice. And let me slide over so I can show you just a few items as I get stuck here. There's a little bit of a center console hump, I imagine, for the combustion one to leave room for the all-wheel drive drive shaft. You have this really nice, high-quality um, center vent control, but no adjustable back vents. You cannot direct the airflow. How weird is that? What? So maybe this vent adjusts the airflow up and down, but you can't change it left and right. Two USB-C ports back here, good. Nice center console. Um, with two cup holders as well. This feels okay. Really nice seating materials. Totally leather-free seating material, by the way. Look at this mini badge inside. Feels really high quality. This is the interior material to be worthy of the price of mini. Minis are expensive, and now this interior, no question, is, is up to the price. This is nicer than the iX1 interior. So if you're cross-shopping iX1 and this, or Fisker Ocean and this, this has the best interior. What do you think, Alyssa? Uh, yeah, I think the interior styling's great. Uh, the room, however, is not, but that's to be expected in a Mini. And um, yeah, just need more ventilations, because I mean, if their mascot's a dog, they should really know that dogs need more air in the back. Totally agree. I d have not heard any mention of a dog or pet mode. I don't think the Germans will do this, um, but they really need to. So no dog mode is a miss. Um, which would be like leaving the air conditioning on in the car if you leave your dog and then also um, keeping a message on the screen. You also have these, uh, you know, sort of, um, I guess, inserts up here. This is for like if you have like a, a shade that goes across for the dog if the back seats are folded. So they even have dog accessories and other accessories you can put in here, coat hooks, other stuff. And unfortunately, just not uh, there yet. The interior. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a really nice seat pocket. This is great. And it's unlike the new Model 3. Yeah, it's exactly one hand leg. But unlike the new Tesla, stuff isn't gonna fall out of this one, like the Model 3 Highland will. Uh, door exit handles, very interesting. Um, they open, as Alicia is showing you there, really nice action to them, actually. They feel good, I like it, no complaints there. Good door pockets as well, nice design. You can tell every bit of this car had full design intent to be this way. Um, and I think that's where the mininess is going now. Mini no longer means small. It's an emotional experience. It's a high quality experience. And there's a lot of personalization as there always has been, but even more now than before. And I think that's what a certain group of people are looking for, especially a younger crowd getting into an EV. I could see huge fan base coming around this car, even though it may not have the longest range or fastest charging. 
it's still really cool and it will work for many people, especially here in Europe and in urban environments in the US. But this is not your cross country road tripper at all. Let's jump in the front. Actually, maybe before we do that, we should jump in the back. We should take a look at the trunk. Storage space has always been good. Really awesome squared back back here. This spoiler is huge. This is very aggressive and I love how it's a proper hatch. It comes all the way to the back and woof, straight down, get as much room as possible on the inside. No longer do you open the trunk with the mini badge and you have a power trunk as well. You can just hit this button right back here to activate it. So this is your trunk open. Then you have literal BMW buttons to close it and lock the car when it's closing. Big trunk, bigger than I was expecting. Your impression, Alyssa, on the trunk space? Yeah, plenty, plenty of space. Yeah, I agree. Some underfloor storage here. This one's an all-wheel drive model. I wonder if you don't get all-wheel drive if you have this hump here. Um, unsure at the moment, but okay. Looks good. You have a tow hook release. Might not. Yeah, here it comes. And it can tow 1200 kilograms. In the US, probably not. But I think I can just hit it again. And there it goes. You wouldn't want to do that when a trailer is connected. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close the uh, trunk now. So let's back up so we can show everyone how this looks. Speed, good speed. Let's test the thunk. A little bit of rattle there, interesting, but not the end of the world. Typical good, good ish build quality. Alyssa, I'm going to have you come around here to the passenger side as I explore the inside of the cabin. So come on over this way. Just come on over this way. I'll get that in a second. Great. Thank you. I'm going to have you film from this direction. I'm going to jump in the driver's seat for the first time in the new Countryman. And I say the first time I just sat in it to adjust the seat. What am I thinking? <laughs> so here I go. Great easy in and out door thunk maybe not the best but i don't necessarily agree with the door thunk being the international standard of build quality but it has turned into that initially wow what a cool interior i love truly love the interior here one thing i'm noticing it's a little bit bright outside but especially at night you have all these led lights that come across the dash on both sides and it's actually a projection coming out of right here so if i cover this you no longer get it and the colors change completely based off of what's going in the background of this system here um, steering wheel feels similar to the old mini yours steering wheel which was like the rolls royce quality leather this is animal free really nice but too thick way too thick of a steering wheel i don't know what bmw is thinking this has to be very thin in my impression so i think that would be good and maybe i was sitting a bit closer than i would have anyway so the back seat leg room might be just on borderline interesting on the wheel as well again everything design oriented you can see this strap here for your third spoke is really cool and it's pretty tight in there as well but i wonder if you're just feeding the wheel through your hand and you catch it it might leave a small impression in your hand because it is quite rough on the side. So I wonder how that would be in everyday driving. I feel like it would actually um, wear down your fingers because I, I, how I drive a lot is with my hand down here and it's pushed up against the third spoke. And this is, this, it's so thin and it's so strong it might rub against your fingers. So, okay, maybe that's a visually great looking thing, but in reality, not so much. I have an eye tracking IR sensor uh, right here. Um, and I say IR, I'm not 100% sure of the technology, but I'm pretty certain it will be that. And that's right there. Really nice dash. Interestingly, no screen in front of the driver. Um, they took a Tesla approach and put the screen right here in the center instrument cluster as you're driving. Your speed, I should say. And is that okay? Is that bad? I don't know. It's very traditional of classic minis. And if you look at the R53 generation or R56 generation, yeah, you had your speedometer here in the center, but you always could have the option of a digital speedometer in front of you as well inside the tack. Now you have to option the head up display, which can show you your speed. But unfortunately, it's one of these plastic head up display things and not the projection on the glass windshield. And this is a miss. This sucks. I just know this from driving the, the current generation minis, how much I hate these stupid head up displays with everything on here. Um, really wish they would have done it in the windshield like a BMW. That's where I'm like, OK, it really needs the projection. However, it may not have been 100 percent possible with this sharp angle on the windshield. Um, you really need a special type of polished glass and to really dial all of this in. So maybe there was an issue with the windshield rake why they had to go with this approach. But this approach is not good. 
but I would still recommend getting the head-up display because I think it's better to have your speed in front of you than over here. At least with Tesla, when you know Model 3, Model Y, your speed is about here because it's a wide rectangular screen. And so here it's got to be at least six inches, maybe even more outside of your field of view versus having your speed here to here. And I think that might make actually some difference. Don't know. Huge emphasis on the software in this car. I'll get to that last, actually. It's Mini Operating System 9. They're getting it before BMW is even getting uh, iDrive OS 9. It's built on Android Open Source Project. Really cool stuff to show you in this. And this one is actually working. The car, again, is a pre-series car, so not everything 100% working. But this will be my first time exploring this software with you, and we'll definitely go on a deep dive there. We have our shifter here on the left, so park, reverse, neutral, drive, and B mode for increased regeneration uh, or recuperation, if you're German, as an example. We have a whole bunch of different drive modes as well, so we have driver assistance settings. We have drivetrain and chassis settings. You can turn the sound on and off. You have adaptive regen all the way from low, moderate, or high amount of regeneration uh, as well, so you can really have this sort of almost one-pedal driving experience. Um, parking brake settings, really great. This VIN number, by the way, it doesn't have a VIN number on the dash, but it does here. This one, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, fully functional or not, but pretty, pretty interesting. We'll get into that. You have your power settings here on the dash as well. Press brake, ready to drive. I do have the key on me. I'll show you that in a, in a second. And then you also have a bunch of mini experience modes. So you have core, green, vivid, timeless and personal and personal actually lets you upload your own image to the background here some noises happening and the color theme of the ambient lighting will match with your background image it'll do some pixel searching and represent the colors throughout the car of this image so if you wanted Alyssa to put a picture of Walter on here our Newfoundland puppy you could do that of course which I think would be kind of cool actually you could have a whole walter mode in your mini and this is the this is where we get into the mini real stuff volume knob here on the right okay nice sound system harman kardon optional as well but i'm already noticing something i think many people will hate if you look in the center of this you'll notice you have a volume logo that spins and someone will come up with a sticker you can put in there i'm sure so that if you're ocd like me this <laughs> needing to stay upright all the time won't be so much of a problem you of course can adjust the volume here on the steering wheel as well um, what else do we have here just general hvac controls hazard lights in the center Alyssa, maybe you could just pan out and show everyone the turn signals while we're doing this so there's the rear turn signal for you i think maybe a bit too small if you ask me but maybe not a problem and let's come on over to the front now let's come on over to the front now and here we go running past me let's show everyone the front turn signals thank you Alyssa, for taking the time to walk around this whole car thankfully it's uh under five meters long so it's not that long of a walk and we can have you coming on back great really liking these vertical hvac controls here there's also dual zone climate which is a great option to have and it seems like you can go at least in celsius up and down by one degree whereas in the previous cars you can only go by two degrees fahrenheit at least so yeah not sure if that was always the case in celsius or not heated steering wheel three options for that and heated seats three options for that as well that's really awesome and let's just come here into the fan settings and turn it off okay really intuitive and snappy ui on initial glance which is great we have a phone charger here in the center that guess what Alyssa, is actively cooled guess what <laughs> that is so cool so it's no longer a phone heater it's actually a phone cooler as well so that you can get more efficient wireless charging we have a, a lock pad I don't, that's not representative of production also just some extra storage down here and cup holders down that should perfectly fit a strawberry acai i think they really nailed this multi-level approach and really liking the interior storage space here that's pretty awesome then there's this i don't know rail system or something i think you can customize what you put here but just a little box if you will a mini one at least there these are all in the launch models and that looks nice center armrest has literally no storage it slides forward and back but but you have this big brick why why can't we open it 
Minnie, what are you doing? Let me put stuff in here. That's crazy. Unless there's a trick to opening it. I'm pulling it in every direction. Nope. There's no latch. There's nothing. Nope. And I just got grease all over my fingers. Oh no. Because <laughs> I grabbed the rail. Okay. Two USB-C ports up here as well. And a 12 volt. Love to see it. And just an extra storage space here as well. Glove box. Let's take a look. Very shallow, small glove box. The plastics here. Yeah. Feeling this is where you feel a little bit of the cost cutting just very plastic experience going with the glove box. But if you're going to save money, that's probably the place to do it. You're going to have a hard upper dash surface as well. No one's touching up here, but then have this really nice fabric dash around the car. Yeah, this feels good. Everything feels hollow. I can already hear rattles in the dash, but again, pre-series car, it's hard to judge, but maybe it will do the mini thing and just rattle forever because that's what they've always done. And so you have to keep some brand heritage around. Maybe they're doing it here. Uh, the seats themselves, I feel like I have a great seating position, pretty high belt line, so I actually don't feel like I'm sitting that high. Huge amount of headroom, this much headroom, literally that much above my head. So my dad, who's six foot five, would have no problem sitting in here. Again, I'm six foot one and no issues at all. Nice stocks around too, they feel good. Typical BMW stuff. Driver assistance controls on the left side, by the way, do not let you adjust the follow distance. A real miss and bmws are this way as well you have to go into the system in driver assistance settings which we'll do a whole thing on this software in a minute you go into the driver assistance settings and you can choose do you want it to be close or medium or far in general and then it will adapt based off of the situations going around you also the car won't make automatic lane changes but if you have a navigation uh, address set where it's trying to pull you off the highway it'll actually slow down find a gap in traffic so that you can easily just move the car over a lane. How well that'll work, I don't know. We'll have to try that for sure. Um, does this one have the massaging seat option? It doesn't seem like it. Oh yeah, seat comfort massage settings, massage on. Oh, there's multiple options. So you have activation, relaxation, revitalization, and invigoration. Let's try the invigoration one. And it feels very similar to ID4 massage where it's just using the center bladder of the seat going up and down. And it's making a little bit of noise. It's just filling up with air. So it's not like a seven series where it's like knurling you and has all these little balls in there that are really digging into your skin. It's just a nice backrest up and down, but honestly, it's better than nothing. To me, the seats feel a little bit shallow. I kind of wish they had a thigh extension and the material though is, is great. Also, this one being the luxury trim still has quite an aggressive side bolster here. And for me being slightly larger, I feel like it's a little bit, it, the seats have room to be wider. I wish they were just a tiny bit wider in the bolstered area. If this was the JCW sporty seat, I could understand it. And it might be the same seat structure, but unfortunately not. It's also a perforated material and no ventilation. I also have to mention, mention that Volkswagen ID4, really a competitor to this vehicle, has ventilated seats. This is a much nicer cabin, a much nicer experience. So you need to balance when you're thinking about buying a Countryman, how much does style, experience, touch and feel points matter to you? Or how much does charging network range, charging speed, driver assistance with autopilot like in a Model Y, acceleration, handling, resale value, maybe Tesla might make more sense. We don't know the pricing for our market. I really hope Mini can get an aggressive price on this car because I think that's the only way to justify the likely close to 210 mile EPA range that we're gonna see. It needs to have at least 200 mile EPA range. If it comes in under, don't even bring it. Um, that's just my impression from a marketing standpoint. The range isn't everything, but we'll see. And, and if the charging curve's okay, we'll be good. Um, I think that's most of the touch points in the car. Um, I, I truly love this cabin. We have a great sunroof actually up here that physically opens. You can take a look. So that is awesome. And hello from down here inside the Countryman. It's really great in here. So loving it. There's also an interior camera. I wonder if you can use this for selfie photos or something like this. We'll have to see. So um, we just, sorry, we're just filming a YouTube video. You're on YouTube, just so you know, it's okay. <laughs> but in the middle of filming, I think in Germany, you have to ask people to film them. So that's, I was not telling them to leave. I was just letting them know they're gonna be on camera. Um, okay, Alyssa, you wanna have a seat inside so we can go through the software of the car? 
And now your first time checking out the inside of the Countryman. What do you think? That's comfortable. Yeah. I really like this car. I mean, I've always, maybe it's because I just have so many fond memories of Countryman and I've done so much with them and so many fun adventures, but something about this interior really works for the car. I'm so thrilled with it. So let's try and play around with this software a little bit. This is the home screen at the moment. There's no photos loaded up in it and I am in personal mode. So let's go to another mode, vivid mode. Sure. So it'll load up. Whoa, make some noises. Okay. And it brings us right to the sound system and we'll get out of that one right now. So we have, again, a pre-series one and that took a little while to load up there. And I'm noticing all these little dots here, but I don't think I can swipe. Oh yeah. You have to do big swipes here. For example, you can say something. Ah, so you can pull up some trip information, which is great. Love to see that. We have some other things as well. I'm not sure what this one is. Just a mini floating on clouds. If I hit the settings button. Ah, so we have all of our driver assistance options here. Let's see what we have here for driving. Speed limit assistant, route speed control, stop at traffic lights. Vehicle will display a message to stop manually at junctions. Drive off reminder. So it does light. It reads the traffic lights when they go green. No way. That's great tech. Mini coming up with the good stuff. Actively follow the route. So will it helps you take exits by adjusting the speed, but it won't do automatic lane changes like we had mentioned. So you have your distance control setting. This is where you have to go close, medium, or far on average. Avoid overtaking on the right. That's a very German option, of course. In the US, you're not supposed to, but no one follows this rule. Back to the home screen now. Very nice display. I love finally, I was just talking to someone recently. Why do, why are all displays in cars squares? This circular display is so cool and it's full o OLED by the way. So it's really vibrant. The blacks are really black. It's awesome in here. Really loving this one. Um, let's just go into climate control really quick again. So we can turn it on here in automatic low fan, very low fan. So multiple options. These air vents feel good. It's a very quiet air vent as well. So that's great. We can sync the temperatures and then I, you know, so you click. Okay. So is it a double click to change temperature? No, you can just touch the red or blue side here, which is great. So I can go 19, 18, 17 degrees. So we'll just go 18 on very low fan so that we're not sweating away in here at the moment. That is great stuff. Here we have all of our apps, similar to BMW. There's so many apps, but I'm loving all of the little graphics here. Interior camera, what do we have here? Single photo, aha, let's take a photo. How do we do it? We click this button. <laughs> and now if we go to gallery, there we go. And you can see someone else also took a photo in here. And then if you come to this mini, you'll see us in there as well. How about that? That's really fun, <laughs> really, really fun. Okay, we have some other things as well. Journey data, you know, really great stuff. This is a preview of what BMW OS 9 will be able to come to. So they're actually launching for the first time the new iDrive backend software and stack in mini products. So I'm really, really loving this one. I think this is a great uh, choice and it's really good. Let's go into the charging settings since this is always uh, the big deal. You have an AC limit. You can adjust in big increments your maximum AC charging power. Good. We have charge up to 20%, charge up to 100%, and they recommend 80% for daily charging. And of course, you can go all the way up to 100%. But you can see it's recommended to charge to 80% instead of 100% like most cars. Since this one's here for storage, we'll just set it to 50. I like how you can set it all the way down to 20. Technically, somewhere between 20 and 35% would be best for storage, but we'll just put it there for them and I'm sure they will adjust it to how they need. You can also manually precondition your high voltage battery pack if you want to. So activate once, you would go here and now it's warming the battery pack in preparation for a DC fast charging session, which is fantastic integration. So much more than the current 
um, uh, Mini uh, Cooper SE that's on the market. I also love this setting, very similar to uh, the BMW stuff. You can have the car derate charging if you don't want the fans to be loud. And you would think, why don't you want the fans to be loud? First of all, the fans aren't that loud. Um, but if it's in your garage and you live in Arizona, sometimes you don't want to hear it. Or and especially like in Japan, they have nighttime noise regulations where you can't actually make over a certain decibel. So this might be for homologation reasons why that's in there. I would leave it to unrestricted. I'd rather have more fan noise and a colder battery, but that's just my, um, my preference there. So great stuff, good driving things. Here's all of your different experiences again that I showed you. So we're on Vivid. You can go, yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of slight glitchiness here or there. Go-kart mode changes the ambient lighting, the steering feel, everything like this. <laughs> Woohoo! I love that. You get your battery, your power output gauge, uh, some really great things here. So that's, that's awesome. Is this your uh, battery temperature on this side? I wonder, what do you think, Alyssa? No state of charge and then accelerator pedal position i think would be this one on that side um yeah really really fun car and i love the operating system i think they've done truly a, a great job with all of this is there anything else we should show everyone maybe some system settings items i don't know if there's anything that exciting in there anyway that's the new mini operating system love the experience toggles basically your drive modes we'll put it back to core which is sort of the startup the key up really good sounding system that sound system had huge bass right there great envelope we can never show on youtube uh you know how sound system sounds but if that's an indication of what it could sound like when you're jamming down the road that will be epic by the way the glass roof doesn't seem very tinted but there is a shade. I know we bounced around a lot, but at least that will be there. That can cover the whole car. And it seems like no light will get through the shade at all. It's not even perforated. I've just stopped it so I can send it back because I think when people sit in here, it's nicer to have it open. And there you go, the Mini Countryman. Let's step outside. I'll make sure I haven't forgotten to tell you anything. Again, pricing is unknown. The one thing you should know is when can you buy one? Uh, I believe they're built, like I mentioned, in Leipzig. They will start production in the combustion trims sometime in October, November, like very soon. And then February is when the electric one starts production. Whereas the hard top in the mini lineup starts as an EV first, and then the combustion ones come later. So they have sort of opposite launch schedules for the mini stuff. Honestly, I think the hardtop should just stay fully electric. That's just my opinion. Get it into the future. But there's still a lot of people who want combustion. And stay tuned to the video on the JO1, the new fully electric hardtop. Let's pop outside. Make sure I didn't forget to tell you anything. Wow. Loving the new Countryman right here. Let's see. Did we get everything? I wrote down all the main points that I wanted to tell you. Uh, coefficient of drag significantly reduced over the outgoing model. 0.26 CD versus 0.31 on the F60 generation. I think we got everything. Boom. How about that? Only had to reference this in the beginning. And we just pulled up here to film it. That was epic. So cool. I hope you guys can tell how excited I am about Mini and truly how I want them to build the best possible product. No question the design team here, the experience team, the HMI team had all the freedom in the world to create a world-class experience. There is no EV that has more thoughtfulness on the interior, more things to make you feel like you can make your car your own. I love all of that. I wish the technical team had the same freedom though because I feel like with such a world-class interior and great build quality and materials and the way this car makes you feel is really happy and like someone has cared about everything. I, again, wish that the technical team was able to build a world-class leading charging vehicle efficiency we're un still unsure of, but I think that might let it down a little bit is the technical side of things, battery pack, capacity and range and charging performance. Time will tell though, of course, I can't wait to experience it and take it on a road trip and drive it as soon as possible. So stay tuned, but here you go, the new U25 electric mini countryman. Seriously love it. And I would give up some technical compromises to drive this car every day. It's epic. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on another one soon. Bye bye. Guys, I also forgot the most important part of this car. Every EV needs three things it needs fantastic in car route planning, which tells you where you need to stop 
how long you have to wait there. This car has that. It needs on-route battery preconditioning, so it will warm up automatically the battery pack so you get the fastest charging power. This has that, and it also needs plug-in charge. And at least at launch, I believe this car won't have that. It will come through a software update later. But again, quite unacceptable because plug-in charge is already uh, fairly implemented in the BMW models, so I'm not sure why this one won't, but I think maybe by the time it comes to the US, it will plug-in charge with EA. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope. Also, no mention of Mini or BMW switching to the North American charging standard to gain access to the much better Tesla supercharger network. Again, something they really have to do in order to make this car as competitive as possible.